and and I, I've cataloged the inanities on structures in my head, and it's been a wonderful thing to do. If you stop to think about it, how many unhappy collectors do you know? Whether they collect <laughs> silver or mistresses or <laughs> you know. I would speak tonight a little bit on my favorite subject just as a talk, and after that just take questions from Tom of any kind he wants to answer. What I'd like to talk about briefly <laughs> is <laughs> table. You think I'm table. kidding. <laughs> and the the uh, the topic I'd like to talk about briefly is common sense. Which isn't common. Yes. See? <laughs> and what people mean when they say a man has common sense is uncommon sense. And usually they don't mean that the man has a narrow little activity he's good at, like knitting sweaters, and he sticks to that. What they mean is a man that can operate over a pretty broad range of, of human territory without making any big boners. And that is a very important thing to be, be good at. And the question is how you get it. I was very lucky in my own life because every place I looked at the pinnacle, there was a guy that was better than I was. And my, one of my father's best friends was a great surgeon with a vast mechanical ability. And I knew what this man did with his mechanical abilities and in inventing all these spreaders and things he used to do his operation, that I would never be as good as he was. And everywhere I looked, there was somebody like that. And there was all this folly out there, and I suddenly realized, like, if I just avoid all the folly, you know, maybe I can get an advantage without having to be really good at anything. And I kept <laughs> doing that all my life, and it worked so well that I... I enjoy sharing it with people like you. It really works to tackle much of life by inversion, where you just twist the thing around backwards and answer it that way. I have to give problems to my children, and once when I had all of them together, I said, well, there's an activity in America. There's a one-on-one -on -one tournament, and the national champion became the national champion on two separate occasions, 65 years apart, name the activity. And seven of my children could not remotely do it. The eighth is a PhD physicist, and he did it very quickly. And what he did was he just turned it around. He says, it cannot be athletic. And he realized that no, no 85-year-old was ever going to win an athletic thing with the neurological and other deteriorations that are so evident tonight on the stage. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, well, could it be chess? He's a chess player. And he realized that no 85-year-old was ever going to be the U.S. chess champion. He knows what a chess tournament is like. But that led him to checkers, a game that you could almost master with enough experience. And, of course, that was the correct answer. It took him about 15 seconds. All kinds of problems like that that look so difficult. When you turn them around, they, they, they are quickly solved. And, and so this process that I've gone through life doing of identifying folly and trying to avoid it has worked wonderfully for me. Another trick that, that I got very early was that I loved big ideas that had a lot of instructive power. And I liked them so well that I didn't mind when they were in somebody else's territory. I just went in and took the ideas. So I paid no attention to, to the territorial boundaries of academic disciplines. And I just grabbed all the big, big activity, uh, ideas that I could. And then I used them in daily activity to solve problems and amuse myself and do self-education and so forth. Well, that makes me a collector. I'm a collector of inanity. And, and I, I've cataloged the inanities on structures in my head. And 
It's been a wonderful thing to do. If you stop to think about it, how many unhappy collectors do you know? Whether they collect <laughs> silver or mistresses or, <laughs> you know, by and large, collectors are happy. And collecting inanities is just wonderful. If you collect stamps the way I once did, I soon had a U.S. stamp collection I couldn't afford to add a stamp to. Well, what fun is collecting when you can't afford to the next stamp? When you're collecting inanities, there's never a shortage. And there's all this low-hanging fruit. We had one this morning from the, from the governor of New York. <laughs> that that now, was so, pretty expensive fruit. Yeah, well, but... And so, when you, this is just a wonderful activity, and it's amused me and instructed me all my life. And, and another thing that I, I got into when I did that was to be very interested in seeing how these ideas interplayed together. There's not big academic reward or worldly reward for integrating one discipline for a strange discipline but a strange discipline that's not your own. So if you do it in your head, you're in a territory without much competition. Warren always says you should take the high road in life because it's less crowded. And, <laughs> and, and this is a less crowded mental road in life and it, it, it really works. And of course, when you do that, you get into issues where ideas are in conflict. And of course, it demands synthesis. Well, a lot of people, when they see a demand for synthesis, just synthesis immediately retreat into whatever orthodoxy they came from. That's not the monger. If there's two big, powerful ideas and there's a terrible tension between them and synthesis is, is, is demanded, I look it up if I can, and if I can't look it up, I try and figure it out. And if I have a poor approximation, I use that for a few years until it gets better. I got this, I got another idea that was very useful. I always liked Occam's razor. Now that is a wonderful way to think. You can argue that Einstein's whole career was was just a marvelous demonstration of Occam's razor. E equals mc squared is a pretty damn simple idea, but think of the power of it. And, and then Einstein developed, this may be apocryphal because I've never seen it in any original source I, I trusted, but I've seen Einstein quoted with this observation over and over again. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but no more simple. Well, if Einstein didn't say it, he should have said it, because this is a very sound idea.